What's going on guys, CKD watch your video and uh, we are back again with another video for this week talking about news, hip hop, all that good stuff so let's get right into it. Starting off here at number one, Atlanta rapper Young Thug recently has started his own record label, right? And uh, it is called YSL Records, and it's under the 300 Entertainment domain. Now, along with him getting his own record, you know, he is actually getting his own office within 300. Like, he's actually, you know, getting uh, his space to run this record label, to do all the stuff that needs to be done with record label, and that uh, he will actually be in charge and making shots and calling shots through his office, right? And there was a video that was out, I think it was a few days ago, where the co-founder of 300, Kevin Lyles, I like the name, uh, he actually, you know, had a bunch of champagne out and uh, gave a toast to the staff and uh, to Young Thug as well uh, for the launch of the new record label. So, hey, man, that's 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 a great thing, man. I love seeing record label startup because, you know, when we have these groups and these labels, uh, they can put on people that are brand new in the industry and uh, they can, you know, give them an audience, really, that they probably would have had a hard time garnering uh, by themselves, right? So think of OVO, for instance. We got Majid. Jordan, you know, we got Party Next Door, P Ring, all these artists that got, you know, catapulted within Drake's, uh, you know, audience. So it's a very good thing, in my opinion, you know, and I uh, can't wait to see what comes of this record label. Going on to number two. Now, there's one undeniable fact about 2016, and that is the grasp that DJ Khaled had throughout the course of the year. DJ Khaled has been everywhere, he's been, he's been doing crazy things, and uh, he does not stop at all. He recently took uh, his keys and his talents to the White House. I don't know if this is because he's releasing his book next week called The Keys, or maybe he just had his son, that could be a reason, but he decided to go visit President Obama, and uh, he had a long Instagram post about the visit. He says he can't wait to show his son the picture that was just taken with him and the President of the United States, and he also thanks the President for all all of his blessings uh, throughout the country and throughout his two terms as president of the United States. So, uh, I mean, like, what? I wonder what it's like, really, you know, to meet DJ Khaled. I want to meet DJ Khaled someday. I hope I get to. But just, you know, the just him <laughs> thanking Obama for the blessings, man, that has to be the funniest thing that's ever happened. And if you think I'm playing about buying that book next week, The Keys, if you really think I'm playing with that, you have another, you have another thing coming for you. I promise you. I am buying that book. Full price, I don't care what it costs, I am buying that book. Going on to number three here, we got some more news about Frank Ocean and the Grammys. Now, as you all know, I did report on this a few weeks ago, but Frank Ocean's album, Blonde, that came out this year, highly anticipated, you know, everyone wanted it, and obviously we got it this year. Uh, it, it was not submitted for a Grammy this year. Now, at first, there were reports that, you know, it was his label that didn't do it. And then it came out that it was him that actually said, no, I don't want to be submitted for a Grammy. And then he actually gave some reasons why, uh, you know, context as well going into this week. He says that, quote, the infrastructure of the awarding system and the nomination system and screening system is dated. And, uh, you know, he, he basically just explains, you know, it's pretty dated at this point. He also says that he would rather this be his, quote, Colin Kaepernick moment and sit in the audience, which uh, is an interesting, you know, uh, way of phrasing it. And it looks like, you know, he has some real gripes and real uh, issues with the way they do voting within the Grammys. He goes on to say, it just doesn't seem to be representing very well for people who come from where I come from and how and hold down what I hold down. So uh, there is definitely some misrepresentation here that's going on. There's definitely, you know, he's feeling a bit misrepresented. And maybe he feels that, you know, there are other people, you know, within the industry and uh, within the crowd, maybe, at the Grammys, that uh, feel the same way. And so I'm very interested to see, you know, where this, is, where this actually goes, you know, in my opinion. I want to see, you know, if uh, Frank Sinopoul is stunned at the Grammys. Is he just playing us? Is he going to perform? We don't know. I don't, I don't know nothing. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll definitely see come round uh, Grammy season. Now, number four, we all like magicians, right? You know, my personal favorite growing up uh, was definitely Chris Angel, definitely a Mind Freak fan. But, uh, you know, David Blaine has always been there, you know, you know, on the side. I would watch him occasionally. But David Blaine is back again, and uh, it is for kind of disgusting reasons. So, a video surfaced, you know, around, uh, I think it was this morning, really. I saw it in school, personally. But uh, a video surfaced of a uh, trick that David Blaine did with the likes of Drake, Steph Curry and Dave Chappelle all, you know, in witnessing him, right? So they were a part of the act, and uh, it seems uh, that, uh, you know, if you go look at the video, I just, you know, implore you all to go watch the video. I don't want to detail it. I don't want to get it all spoiled for you guys. So I definitely do suggest you guys go watch the video. I will have it linked down in the description, but uh, it is disgusting. It is gross. This trick uh, is absolutely uh, appalling, and uh, it was uh, just, just really disgusting. I mean, really disgusting. Let me down in the comments below after you guys watch. Let me know what you guys think about it, but uh, it is really, really gross. 
And going on to number five here, we got some great news in my opinion. It is 2088. Okay, the great duo between Big Sean and Janae Aiko. Everyone knows that more. You know, probably nobody really knows uh, that you know that they're you know a duo now. But uh, they you know put out a EP this year around the beginning of the year of 2016, and uh, it is. Honestly, one of my favorite EPs that came out in 2016. Uh, I definitely do enjoy it. I come back to it constantly, and I definitely do uh, enjoy the 2088 EP that they dropped this year. But speaking of next year, they had some more news to say uh, with them and uh, planning stuff for next year. So both of them have confirmed that in 2017, they'll be dropping a full-length uh, LP, and uh, it will be coming out in 2017, and it will be 2088 style. So it will be, you know, just another 2088 album uh, coming out in 2017. So I'm very happy about that. Personally, in my opinion, I'm very excited. Uh, I liked, you know, them two working together, and I like the project that they made together. So uh, I absolutely cannot wait for this to drop in 2017. Now, nobody's really sure if uh, this is, you know, pertaining to the album coming out next year or if this is just her by herself, but Janae Aiko actually dropped uh, a little bit of teasers and hints for some new stuff dropping later. Directed her fan base to a website called JanaeIsAManiac.com, and when you go to it, uh, it is a 10 second video of a little snippet of a song that I assume is called Maniac, but uh, it is, you know, warped and construed, and there's a bunch of different versions of her, and it's a very, very, you know, cryptic, very weird looking video, and uh, it seems to be teasing at a new Janae Aiko song uh, coming out here in a few weeks, I suppose, or maybe it is, you know, off of her maybe self-titled album, or maybe, you know, a new album that she's doing by herself, or this is a part of the 2088 album coming out in 2017. Who knows? Nobody really knows, but, uh, you know, there is definitely something working with Janae Aiko coming out here in a few days something with maniac or maybe not even probably not a few days probably you know maybe next year or whatever but uh she is working on something called maniac and that's all i got for today's news if you guys enjoyed make sure you would like subscribe share all the good stuff and make sure to leave me you guys some comments what you guys think about all these topics i talked about today on the show thanks for watching and as always i got you